Hello and welcome to Fly Time Sessions with me, Alex Jardine, and today we're going to be looking at the humble pheasant tail nymph and some of its uh, variations as well. It's a fly that was developed not far from where I'm sat on the River Avon running through Wiltshire in Hampshire and since then it has sort of taken the world over and stands at the fore of one of the most successful trout nymphs um, sort of ever ever created uh, in its various guises it it's changed a lot over the years by adding different materials as materials have developed it's allowed um, further variations but the key is to stick with that original material of the pheasant tail uh, which makes up uh, the the main body of the fly so for fly number one we're going to tie, as close as possible, Sawyer's original pheasant tail nymph. So hook-wise, we've got the Parkshrew's G3AY in a size 12, so quite a heavy wire hook. Because we're not adding weight other than copper wire to this, I've gone with a slightly heavier wire hook just to allow it to sink down. And then tying-wise, no thread involved in this one, which makes it quite unique in itself um, but we're actually going to use 0.2 mil copper wire this is the Semperfly one and run through this very clever um, bobbin holder where you can literally thread through the top rather than threading all the way up through the bottom and it allows you to tie with wire a little bit easier so you start the fly as you would with thread so lay a, a wrap on and then wind back over the top. Make sure not to put too many wraps in one place because you'll see this kink. If you don't lengthen it off you'll keep turning and then it will eventually snap. So whenever tying with wire in this way you either need to lengthen it or find a way of holding the bobbin in the same way without twisting the wire. Okay. Wire is a tricky one to work with because it doesn't lie flat like thread which is why most flies now we don't tie that way. So I've twisted off the tag end uh, I don't need that anymore and we've started that off. You may need to hold it in place to stop it wrapping to begin with, once you once you start to get a few turns down, it will get easier. And take it back towards the bend of the hook as you would any other fly. Being, wire, being metal on metal it will slide about so you can reposition if it, you find it's going back or if these turns are open the joy is you can just use your thumbnail and push them back together again a few quicker turns now we're starting to anchor it in so not only does this lay our thread base essentially, but it also provides us with a little bit of weight. What I like to do at this point is just take our super glue and just brush a little bit on there. That will sink down through the metal and bind the wire to the hook shank a little bit. And what that then does uh, is stop the whole body of the fly um, sliding backwards and forwards. Now for the tail, as the name suggests, we're going to use cock pheasant tail in natural. Just be aware that these are both natural cock pheasant tail, but look at the variation of colour. That's what makes it such a fantastic material. So if you know you've got a lot of light betis nymphs in the rivers that you fish, you can go for a paler natural pheasant tail. 
If you know you've got a lot of dark, maybe heterogene ints, you can go with the darker pheasant tail. Uh, I quite like the darker one. Um, it seems to be effective. I don't know if the fish actually care at all. But if you've got confidence in it, it will always fish better. So I've taken how many? Five five fibers there. So quite a few. And now all I'm going to do is make sure that glue's bound a little bit. It'll take a turn round. Make sure that's trapped at the back there. And position it in. So that's given me our tail. Hopefully, if it just all stays in position there. And one more turn just to lock everything in. Bring that forward to make sure nothing's too out of position. And then take your wire in front and wind it forward a little bit just adds a little bit of weight there and now I'm going to just take my pheasant tail forward it doesn't need to be too neat at this point hold that there and then I'm going to take my wire over the top of it to help bind everything down a little so it doesn't completely fall apart when a fish takes bite and then we can trim those off there and then we take another four or five fibers and I do here let's tie somewhere in the in the middle of these there are a few turns Take my wire forward now and then take this portion and wrap it round that thorax area. Make sure you've got all of the pieces. Bring your wire over, bring that one forward. And then what I do is take your finger, make a loop, slide it up so you're making a half hitch over the fly and do that again. And that just ties everything off there. And then you can cut your pheasant out, a little bit long. And then use your fingernail and just rotate the wire against it and snap that off and it doesn't look like much but be sure that's a pheasant tail that will sink down nicely usually to the level where the fish are looking at nymphs swimming up from the bottom ready to hatch out and um, so fish is very well mid to upper water column and one of the flies that has stood the test of time. But then as materials have developed, we then move on to fly number two, which is the Mary pheasant tail. So from the pheasant tail's humble beginnings, we've now changed hooks slightly to the Partridge SLD2. So a slightly finer wire than the G3AY. Um, and then we've put a tungsten bead on to provide us the weight. This is a, um, 
uh, a fulling mill counter sunk tungsten bead uh, in copper uh, and it's 2.4 millimeters and then rather than use our um, our wire for our thread uh, we're now using the Semperfly Nano Silk in 18O and we'll start the fly just behind the bead there run it down and then I run it back up all the way it's, it's just starting to give us a little bit of shape to the fly with 18 -0 thread it's a little bit harder because it's so thin and then rather than using pheasant for the tail uh, I've got Cote de Leon it's a more durable fibre uh, and works really nice as a, as a tailing material take four or five of those line them up They're all roughly the same length and then you want about the body length including the bead and just loop that over and then take that back to the bend then run your thread all the way back up to the bead with the tag ends, don't cut those just yet and then fold them back because this is creating your bulk around the front so you've got a nice taper to the nymph going forward run the thread back up you want to do this a couple of times but different lengths each time So, some long ones and then some shorter ones and that will give you a bit of a triangular shape to the body which is how most nymphs are based as they're thin by the tail area to allow them best swimming movement and then they're fatter towards the front where the legs are so they can grip onto any weed or rock uh, in the flow of the water then we're going to add our rib material uh, which is copper wire in 0.2mm and to tie this in we simply knock it into the bead and turn our thread round and there we go and then just run it all the way down one side try not to let it twist round the hook and then as it gets to the bottom make sure you've got a couple of solid secure turns and then we'll add the pheasant tail for the body for this I like three fibers um, but depending on the size of the fly small flies you'll only want to put two fibers in large ones you might want four or five fibers and then once you've cut them out turn it round so you've got the outer part of the fibre facing backwards and tie the tips in first and I like to tie them just on top of the shank and make sure that they're all bound in and run our thread back up towards the bead and we take our pheasant tail and be really careful with these first turns as that's quite often when the fibres will break so take the pressure off and use your non-tying finger to push the fibres round and then help them help them round guide them back over the top and then use that index finger again just to tuck them round so you want touching turns and you want to try not to let them twist over, you want them to lie flat and then you get that wonderful wonderful effect of light and dark coming through from the quill of the of the pheasant tail and then the spiky fibres coming up and it looks a lot like the gill plates on any swimming nymph and then we'll take our thread over the top 
Tie that off in a few turns in front just to make sure everything's secure. Go in with the tip of our scissors and trim those out. And then take our copper wire. And now, importantly, we wind the opposite direction to the pheasant tail as this will help lock everything in place. So, and nice open turns that are opening a little bit more with each turn until we get to the front where we take our thread over and make sure you lock that in front and behind and then rotate it round until that breaks out. That saves your fly tie and scissors from breaking at that point. And then we start working on the thorax region of the fly. So for this, to add a little bit of shine to it, we're going to put a back on the thorax area, uh, which for that I'm using the Semperfly mirror tinsel, uh, which is 1 uh, of an inch. And uh, the color is Mirage Iris. So it's like a pearly, pearly clear and we tie that in just on top so trapping it down just behind the bead running a reasonable amount of thread turns just to make sure that's all locked in nice and flat there and then we're going to take some dubbing. Uh, we're going to use a natural hair's ear blend. It's one I've mixed myself um, because I prefer to get as many um, guard hairs in as possible. Uh, but you can get, uh, you can buy them. Uh, they tend to have a bit more uh, under fur in. It's a little bit softer and easier to dub with more under fur. But the reason I like the guard hair is it looks like the legs kicking from the nymph. So it's really spiky. So dab that on, doesn't need to be too tight because we want those guard hairs to pop off the thread and stand out and we're just going to fill that whole area behind the bead that we've created and you can see those guard hairs now really pushing off the fly. Take our thread to the front and then bring our flash over the top, drop the thread in, couple of locking turns to keep it in place, couple of turns in front, and trim that out with our scissors, and then take our friend the whip finish tool, and loop everything round, hold those guard hairs out of the way, and once more and that is the Mary pheasant tail all done and you'll see that little bit of flash just on the back that we created using that tinsel lovely and buggy and a wonderful nymph for fishing in all water you can fish on a euro nymph setup a dry dropper or just sight fish it if you can see a fish nymphing in the flow you can drop that in front of it and watch for the take. Now for fly number three we're going to tie the flashback pheasant tail. This is a great one after um, after a flood and the water's dropping back maybe carrying a little bit of colour still um, and you just want that extra, extra bit of sighter for the fish to see. So fly, uh, hook wise we've got the Partridge SLD2 um, in a 14 this one. We've got the Fuller Mill uh, Tungsten Bead Countersunk uh, in a 2.4 mil. You can go one size up as well if you want to really get the fly down so a 3 mil on that or tie a bigger fly all together. Uh, thread we are uh, using the Semperfly wax thread in hot orange, uh, 12 oak, 
Um, so I prefer that over an 8 just because you've got a little bit more time to work with the thread being slightly thinner. We start that just behind the bead, lay half a wrap and take it back up to the front and then nip the tag end out and then run your thread back further again and now we're going to secure the tail which is Cote de Leon uh, so that wonderful tailing material so we're going to take four or five fibers again Get those out and roughly the length of the body with the bead, pop it against the hook, slide the thread up between thumb and forefinger and then drop it down on top of the shank there. Right. Your locking turns all the way to the back of the straight part of the shank and then wind all the tag end forward without trimming it off until you get to the bead, let it fold back on itself and then trap those tag ends facing back, that will help create the profile of the nymph then and being 12 o thread it doesn't require too many turns to build up the body shape and then we're going to add in our rib material which is copper wire in 0.2mm so to tie that end slide it into the bead on the tire side of the shank and then work your thread down it holding it in position so it doesn't rotate around the hook then we're going to take our Semperfly mirror tinsel in Mirage Iris in uh, 0.8 millimeters and just trap that down at the tag end of the fly. A few thread turns and then take our wonderful pheasant tail and cut out three fibers. Keep them together, turn them round so the base of the fibre is facing backwards and tie the tip sections in. Put them to the back of the fly and then run your thread all the way up near the top there. And take your fibres, take care on this first turn. So non time finger to help them round and do touching turns without the fibers twisting oh typical I've managed to lose a fiber there let's see if we've got enough to work with that will happen from time to time I think we're just about going to get away with that. Otherwise, you just have to take everything back and tie in some new fibers. Take our thread over the top a couple of times, and a couple of times in front. Trim that out, and then take our tinsel and pop that over the top and just lock that in with two turns at the moment and then our rib so our rib comes in over the top make sure that the tinsel stays in position and nice open turns each time as you bring everything forward, just opening as you go. And then one more turn. 
So now you are off with the thread. And then once you're happy, take the wire out first. So it's not in the way of the scissors. Keep rotating that round until it breaks out. And then take your scissors. Trim out the flash. And then take some natural hairs here to the thorax area. Again, this is the blend I've done myself, so I've got a lot of guard hair to give me that nice buggy, spiky thorax area. Another couple of turns. And then this is the reason why I've used the hot orange thread. Is I'm now going to lay a handful of thread turns so you can see that orange kicking through and that's another sighter for the fish to hone in on particularly if the water is carrying a little bit of colour and then in with the whip finish tool a couple of times just for security take your scissors, nip everything out and there you have the flashback pheasant tail a great fly for all water conditions you can see the flash kicking through on the top there and really effective, particularly if you just need something extra to get the fish to take your fly. So fly number four is going to be the Vlad. And as pheasant tails have developed, um, we've made them, we've varied them for different water conditions and some have moved more away from the original than others uh, so for this one this is a great grayling pattern um, but also works really well for trout in all water conditions um, it was one that we sort of came up with in the Czech Republic by combining different flies together but hook wise we've got the Partridge SUJ so jig hook uh, this is a size 14 with a 3mm countersunk tungsten bead uh, in copper. So this fly is designed to get down near the bottom. Fish upside down with that point raised. And then thread, we've got the Semperfly wax, silk, uh, wax thread uh, in shell pink, 12 volt. And we'll begin the fly just behind the bead. And take everything back and nip out the thread we don't need and rather than having a tail made out of pheasant or cot de leon this time we're going to have a floss based tail so I've got the Semperfly Flora Bright in blood red and I'm taking a longer strand of that cut that out and then what I'm going to do is double it over and do so so I've got quite a few strands together uh, let's say eight strands is going to be when all done so just every time I'm turning them over I'm just cutting the loops so once you're satisfied you've got enough for the tail so this is eight strands for this match it up against the the hook to throw our loop through our thumb and forefinger and drop everything down on top of the shank there bind it down nicely and wind the body bit forward. The reason we don't cut it off at the back is you'll end up with a lump and it's really hard to then get that out of the fly later on. Cut those out there and then we want to cut the tail down to the sides. We're going to have to go in line with that but it's really quite short, it's not a long tail and then if you just run your finger 
back against it, you'll see how those fibres will open out and you'll get this fluffy tag then. Uh, if they're struggling to come apart, you can use a dubbing needle to tease them out. But that's usually enough to get you going. Then we're going to take copper wire uh, in 0.2mm and tie that in. Use the slot in the bead just to slide that in there and then wind it back down towards the tail. So the tail, make sure you've got a couple of solid turns in there and then we're going to add in our pheasant Again, with the, with the body being a bit fatter on this, I'm going to take four fibres, just for security. And we tie them in tip facing forwards. Just nice and short. To get us optimal length to wind everything forward. With this fly, the body shape is not as much of a concern. Um, this one's more of an impact fly with the colours that we're going to add in. So begin winding the body, take the pressure off by using that non-tying hand, just to use it to ease the fibres round. Do so as you as you go and each turn should be touching turns and try not to let those fibres rotate round each other and then key with this fibre is making sure that you've left enough room to work in the thorax area so bind that off with a good three or four mil to work with at the front and then trip those, trim those out with the scissors take your copper wire and wind in the reverse direction with nice open rib turns gaining a little bit in width as you go until you get to that final turn over and run the thread round over the top of the wire and then in front and button back up to it that acts as a clamp so when you rotate round it just snaps out and then for this we have a collar hackle so we've got a nice red game cape here nice short, short fibres and to work out if we've got the right size so we want roughly the body length maybe encompassing some of the tail so that's a nice fibre there and clear away the rubbish at the bottom of the feather you want to go a reasonable way up the stem where the stem thins up a little bit to make it easier for tying place it against the hook with the back of the feather facing the flight and trap that in you can bind the stem back on itself that will make it really secure then and then just nip out the tag of that and then Take your hackle pliers if you use them. We're only going to put one, one turn down. Up. So this is adding just a nice leggy area for the front of the fly. Back round and up again. And now tied off. It's not a dry fly hackle so we want them want it quite sparse but 
for this particular fly you want the more solid hackle fibers rather than a softer CDC one. You can do a CDC version if you want a bit of variety in your box as well. But this original one's tied this style. And then trim out your hackle. Tidy everything up a little bit. So you got that lovely sort of draping hackle which is going to add a little bit of movement underwater. And then we're going to add our collar. We're going to use this lovely glitzy pink. This is the Semperfly eye stubbing. And we don't need very much of it. Being quite a long strand, you can pinch it and then just tear it up a little bit. And then bind it round the thread. And we're just adding a small collar, just a couple of turns, so it doesn't take much to add in a add in quite a lot of colour to that fly. And then take your thread, make sure everything's bound round at the front. Whip finish tool, slide it all in. Oh, I'm glad that happened after I'd finished. But there you go. Normally I'd add one more whip finish, uh, but the thread's gone there. Let's just take that out there. And there you have it, the Vlad. A great fly for all water conditions, a really good grayling pattern in the winter, but don't let that put you off from using it on trout waters. I've done very well in places like Iceland for, for brown trout on that fly. So now for the final fly of the video, and another garish pheasant tail that's developed from the original. At this time, the rubber leg pheasant tail nymph. Hookwise, slight change of shape now. We've got the K4AY SE, so a straight eye grub hook. This is a size 10. And then I've got a 3.5mm countersunk tungsten bead uh, in gold. And uh, threadwise, we're going to tie this with the Semperfly black nano silk. And we build that in behind the eye. So this is a fly to use when you're looking for depth, a little bit of movement, maybe looking for something to catch the fish's attention. Um, can work well in colder weather when the fish are reluctant to move for much um, and you just want something a little bit different to cast at them. Uh, running the thread back round the curve of the hook. We'll take it a bit of a weight. Close to the extremity of the bend but not all the way there. And then tail we're going to use something a little bit different. We're going to use park, an actual English partridge. And get some of those fluffy bits out of the way so you can see. And we can take a nice pinch, you can just side it off. So a good 8, 10 fibers. And nice and short, probably half the length of the body now. If you want it a little bit longer, you can slide it through the thread. It's got it there, and then, I, oh, then I'm just going to bind this with open turns all the way up to the top here. As that will help give us some of our thickness in the body, and then I'm going to take some of the fluoro bright and blood red not a large amount this is just to add a little bit of color at the back end of the fly 
Uh, I'll tie it at the front just to help keep the body shape quite uniform just so we don't have a lump at the back of the fly. One more turn. Throw a couple of big open turns just to get that bobbin out of the way. And one that's round just in front of the tail. Touching turns. Three turn, fourth turn to tie off. That's probably all you need. Pressure on that. And you can wind this all the way back up to the top. So it doesn't look like much, but that little red sighter can make a huge difference to the fly. And then trim that out. And now we're going to add our copper wire, the 0.2 mil for the rib. And as before, we just trap that into the bead and wind that down all on one side. Oh, that's not quite what we were meant to do. That's why we wind it all the way down is to secure it in, being a metal a smooth metal, it can slide around. So by winding it all the way down it gives it extra purchase under the flight. Till we get to that tag. A couple of solid turns there. And then get our natural cop pheasant. We'll take four fibers for a fly of this size. those out and tie them in tip first and give ourselves good length of pheasant tail to work with going forward it's having a bit of light issue towards it now And then begin winding at four, just taking the pressure off the original turn, the first turns. And touching turns as we go. And try not to let those fibres wrap round on themselves. So you get a really nice coverage with each turn. So plenty of room to work with. So larger than your normal pheasant tail in the thorax area. Wind that round, trim it out, and then take our copper rib and begin winding the opposite direction to your pheasant tail. Nice open turns. Can be a little bit harder to judge on the curved hooks, but take it all the way to that thorax area and tie it off and then rotate round just to take everything out there. And now we're going to take another a half a dozen fibers. This time, lying them on top, but using up quite a lot of time, roughly in the middle of the fibre, not the tip is too much. And we're covering that whole thorax area that we've created. 
and you can trim the tag end, uh, the tip ends out, just leaving you the butt sections. And now to give you your rubber legs. So here we've got the Semperfly striped rubber legs. This is a, an orange and black stripe. So I've taken one strand, cut it, double it over, cut it in half, and then to tie these in, take the rubber round the thread and use the weight of the bobbin to anchor one on your side and then rotate the bobbin a little bit to anchor one on the off side of your tying and then bind them together keep them on either side of the shank try not to let them twist round and put lots of turns in to anchor that all in place once you're happy that that's all strapped in uh, you can take your Semperfly eye stubbing and we're going to use this brown sparkly brown colour here which is like a blacky brown combination take a reasonable batch of that and I like to tear it up and bind it together this gives you a nice spiky effect to the dubbing and then bind it to our thread and take it up put one turn just in front of the rubber lengths and then one smallish turn in behind them that will just hide any thread that we've got at the back and then fill this middle void between the rubber legs just tightening the dubbing as I go and then we can fill up that space between the rubber legs and the bead just anchor adjust the rubber legs if you feel that they've moved out of position at all and then bring our pheasant tail that we tied in at the beginning over the top drop that in and that acts as our wing bud on the fly tie that off if you're happy that that's all in place take your scissors trim that and then take your whip finish tool round and secure everything down once more and in and then we can knit that out and we've just got one little bit of trim work to do so we don't cut the legs until right at the end and it tends to like them to be roughly the same length so there's two ways you can do this so you can hold them up together and some places you might want them quite long like that hold these ones together as well trim them down and there you have it it's slightly garish but very effective rubber leg pheasant tail works for trout grayling um, but also works for salmon and sea trout in places so worth tying for lots of various situations and a great fly so from Sawyer's humble copper and pheasant pheasant tail nymph through to a wonderful variety of some including more modern materials it's a fly that will work in 
lots of different situations and definitely one that you should have some varieties in your box. Thank you for watching. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and do join me on more Fly Titan sessions in the future. Thank you.